I'm gonna do the self-defense technique, thrust in the darkness. In my opinion, this is a pretty easy one, but there's a couple things within this technique that uh, I have some pet peeves about, but I'll cover that in a, in a moment. Um, here's something that'll really, really help you along your Kempo journey. Darkness is, generally speaking, the opponents are behind us, we can't see them. And there's a way to kind of categorize to help you understand the system. We have a two from the left flank, thrust into darkness, which I'm gonna show you, and escape from darkness. And we have one dark technique, unfolding the dark, that comes from the right flank. So again, thrust into darkness, escape from darkness, left flank, unfolding the dark, right flank. Uh, kind of one that uh, throws things off a little bit is dance of darkness, but not really because we're now into our into the opponent's blind zones. We're behind them where they can't uh, see us when we get behind them. But left flank for the darkness techniques, uh, thrust into darkness, escape from darkness, and then we have unfold the dark on the right flank. I'm going to show you some, a couple of really neat ways to look at this. Um, it, the attack is uh, coming from six o'clock, and it's a step through straight right punch. Boom, to the back of my head. If you think of any technique in Kempo where the opponent's attacking you from the front, we don't step directly to 12 o'clock to block. We usually take off, on, off the line, you know, 10, 30, 1, 30 to get out of the way. So if you teach this technique where you back thrust kick from here, it's a bit of a gamble because I wasn't good enough to know to turn and face him. I wasn't ready. So it's a really gamble game where come on and, oh, I was too late, I got hit. So what I'm going to have you do is just do a little step offline to about 130. Don't do anything there. <laughs> just to move out of the way of the tap coming from 6. So the line eventually is still 612. But now anatomically I'm lined up better to do the kick as well. So Darren's going to come in and I step off. Deep, and I kick. Deep, and I kick him again. I do a front crossover. Deep, and I kick his knee. And I back fist and punch. Some will teach the left hand on top of the punch. Not a big fan, because if he moves his head to the right, out of the way, I miss. If he moved his head to the left, I miss. If I have my back knuckle on top, move your head any way you want, I still got him. I have margin for error. So I want your back knuckle, uh, right hand on top. So if you try this again, I hear him and I step. See, I kick. See, I kick him again. See, I blast the knee. Boom, and I hit. By the way, I could blast his ankle if I wanted. I do a single cover up. Here's my pet peeve. When people do this and this, that's a bad thing. I shouldn't have left him unless I knew the fight was over. So it should be single cover, wait. Oh, he's done. Just pick it up. Okay, I'm done. Oh, he's trying to get back up, cross behind, get your kick to the back. Okay? So we try this one again. So I look, and he says, I launch the kick. Gee, but one little secret here too. If I turn all the way to a neutral and do a front kick, gee, might be a good kick, but I'm not maximizing my power. Watch this little trick here. I'll go slow here. So he steps, gee, I turn into gee, the kick. So I have that little more torque in the straight. Front crossover, gee, blasts his knee, back up a long punch. Single cover, wait, oh wait, I'm gonna get you right in the back there. So I time it, as soon as he tries to get up, I launch that last kick. So I try it one more time. So watch the little step off. Deep, turn, deep, kick. Cross over, boom, ha. Deep, that's the timing that you want, not how fast you go because you shouldn't have left in the first place. That's thrust into darkness.